Good morning everyone. Let's talk about the history of medical technology profession. So, when did the practice of medical technology began? It began because of the presence of disease. So, during 300 BC to 180 AD, we have two important scientists. We have Hippocrates and Galen. Hippocrates was known as the father of medicine and Galen is known as a Greek physician and philosopher. Now, both of them relied on qualitative assessment. When you say qualitative assessment, it means that you describe what you see in the patient. So their diagnosis is mainly on description based on what they observe. Okay? And they also measure body fluids such as blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. And then they were able to relate the appearance of those body fluids to certain diseases. Now, Hippocrates, he was the one who first tested urine. During that time, they test urine by tasting the urine. Tinitikman nila class kung yan ba ay matamis, di ba? Kasi kapag daw matamis, possible daw na meron siyang diabetes. Okay? Besides tasting the urine, they smell the urine. They also observe the color of the urine if there are abnormal color. Because if the color of the urine is too dark, then you have the presence of a disease. Another thing is the clarity of the urine. If that if the urine is too torpid or cloudy, then there is a presence of disease. Besides testing the urine, he also listened to the lungs and observed out toward appearances. When you say out toward appearances, he is able to observe the different signs and symptoms of diseases. On the other hand, Galen, he was the one who first described diabetes as diarrhea of urine. Why? Because if you have diabetes, you will frequently drink water and urinate frequently. So Galen was able to observe and establish a relationship between fluid intake and urine volume if you have diabetes. That's why he called it as diarrhea of urine. Now, during medieval, um, during those time in medieval Europe, they also perform a procedure known as water casting or uroscopy. So this is what it looks like. They will submit the urine in a flask, and then the doctor during that time or the scientist during that time, they will observe the appearance of the urine, the color, the density, and also the quality. And then they have here a record, they have a chart on what's normal and abnormal. And then after that, nagkaroon tayo ng progress during 11th century. This is now the time where they, they were able to describe the symptoms of a patient based on their observations. During the 18th century, this is now the time they started dissecting cadaver. So, they use mechanical techniques and dissection of cadaver. Why? Because dissecting cadavers will give them an in-depth knowledge of what is really going on inside the body. They were able to observe the organs of the patient and they were able to observe the appearance of the organs if the patient has a disease versus the organs of a patient that is healthy. And then during the 19th century, this is now the time of the machines. So, dito, nags, dito nagsimula ang innovation. Okay? Nagsimula na ang invention of the machines. The first is John Hutchinson's spirometer. This is it. That one. For measuring the vital capacity of lungs. They also have the Jules Harrison's sphygmo manometer for measuring the blood pressure. And also, during 19th century, this is now the time they recognize the importance of chemical analytes or chemistry test for diabetes, anemia, diphtheria, and syphilis. So this is a example of progress of technology in terms of medicine. You first have the, the stethoscope, and then you had the microscope, ophthalmoscope, the laryngoscope, and of course the x-ray by Wilhelm Rowingen. You also have the electrocardiograph, the Kenny method, the drinker respirator, heart lung machine, and also the cardiocatheterization and angiography. So, hindi lang yan ang meron sa technology. Marami pa. 
So you also have the electron microscope. An electron microscope, this is not a typical microscope because on a typical microscope, there is a limit on the size of the cells or microorganism that you can observe. However, for the electron microscope, you can actually observe very, very small particles that you cannot see in a normal microscope, such as the viruses. So, kaya niya. Ganun siya ka-powerful ng kanyang resolving power. Another thing is the use of computers and medical researches that you can find in MRI machines and also in tomography. After that, they also develop prosthesis such as the artificial heart valves, artificial blood vessels, functional elect electromechanical limbs, and reconstructive skeletal joints. And then, nagkaroon pa rin ng progress of technology until they reach robotics. So, during this time, ngayong mga panahon na to, ang robotics ginagamit din siya pagdating sa surgery. So, they utilize that in surgery. Hindi lang sa surgery, pati rin sa testing of, um, testing of analyze in the laboratory. Okay? So, meron tayong mga robotics sa ating lab. And of course, genetic engineering and telemedicine. So all of this technology, all of this innovation was able to contribute to improve the quality of life and increase life expectancy. So let's begin with the history of medical technology in the United States. So why do we need to study medical technology in the United States? Bakit ba siya related sa atin? So don't forget that we were once occupied by the United States and then most of the practices of medical technology, we are um, we learned from them. Tinuruan nila tayo. So, saan ba nagsimula ang unang clinical lab? So, they first established that in the University of Pennsylvania. They called it as the William Pepper Laboratory of Clinical Medicine. So, that is in 1895. And then, in 1918, they have John Colmer, which called for um, which called for the development of a method that would certify medical technologists. So, according to John Colmer, it is not enough that a medical technologist is, um, is knowledgeable or is skilled when it comes to performing laboratory tests. A medical technologist must also be certified. So, dapat daw meron siyang formal certification that the medical technologist is really a medical technologist. It was published the demand for and training of laboratory technicians, which is a description of the first formal training course in medical technology. So John Colmer, he, he wrote a document, the demand for and training of laboratory technicians, which is the training manual for medical technologists. And then he also called for certification of a medical technologist. Hindi pa yan licensure ha, wala pa sa nang license during that time. Certification pa lang. And also, during that time, 1918 as well, the state of Pennsylvania, they enacted a law requiring all hospitals and all medical institutions to have a, a fully equipped lab together with a full-time laboratory technician. During that time, they call the medical technologist as laboratory technician. So, para daw makapag-operate ka ng hospital or any medical institution sa state of Pennsylvania, kailangan meron kang fully equipped laboratory together with a full-time laboratory technician. That is their requirement. And then after that, during 1920, they make use of um, the concept of a clinical lab always being directed by a chief physician. Okay? So, hindi lang yan basta-basta may mga lab tech doon or med tech doon. Kailangan daw meron dyan director. Then, the director is the chief physician. And also, during 1920, a clinical laboratory have several divisions. Dito na nagsimula magkaroon ng divisions ang mga clinical lab. Divided into clinical pathology, Bacteriology, Microbiology, Serology, and Radiology. Lahat yan aaralan natin sa mga susunod na meeting kung ano ba yung mga division yan. Ano ba ang pathology? Ano ba ang microbiology? Ano ba ang serology? Lahat yan, we're going to study that sa mga susunod na meeting. Then after that, 1922, ASCP was founded. Ano ba ang ASCP? ASCP is the 
American Society for Clinical Pathology. So this is in this is an organization, a professional organization in the United States that is responsible for certifying medical technologists. However, during that time, during 1922, their primary role is to establish the code of ethics for technicians. Ano ba yung code of ethics for technicians na yan? Ibig sabihin ng code of ethics for technicians is that all laboratory technicians and all technologists must practice under the supervision of a physician. So, hindi daw pwede mag-practice ang mga lab techs and med techs kung walang supervision ng physician. And then, the lab tech and the med tech, they cannot, they cannot give diagnosis whether it is written or oral to patients. Ang pwede lang magbigay ng diagnosis ay mga doktor. So again, na-under sila ng mga physician and then bawal magbigay ng diagnosis ang mga lab tech and medical technologies. Ang pwede lang magbigay ng diagnosis are physicians or doctors. And then during 1950, this is now the time that the government recognized the practice as a professional by creating licensure laws. So doon na nagsimula na dapat daw merong license ang mga medical technologists. So let's begin with the medical technology in the Philippines. First, the Spanish health system. So ito yung panahon na occupied pa tayo ng Spain. So the first hospital is Hospital Real in Cebu. This is actually a military um, hospital. It was then moved to Manila to cater for the elite. So yung mga elite ng Spanish during the Spanish time, dito sila nagpapagabot sa Hospital Real in, Hospital Real in Cebu na nilipat din siya sa Manila. And then, during 1578, they established San Lazaro Hospital para naman to sa mga may hirap. So, kung, kung yung pang mayaman, yung Hospital Real, yung pang mahirap naman, San Lazaro Hospital para siya sa mga poor and lepers. Yung lepers, ito yung mga merong ketong. Yung may sakit na leprosy. So, doon sila pinagsama-sama sa San Lazaro Hospital. And then after that, they established the Hospital de San Juan de Dios for poor Spaniards, para naman sa mga mahirap na Spaniards. And then they have the Hospital de San Jose in Cavite. And then in 1611 and 1871, they established the USD or University of Santo Tomas. And then in 1871, is the first faculty of pharmacy and medicine. So, doon nagsimula ng education of medicine during 1871. Pero hindi pa dyan kasama ang medical technology. Faculty of pharmacy pa lang yan and medicine. Now, during 1883 naman, they established the Board of Health and Charity. And then during 1886, that is the time that they published journals of science and medicine that is focused here in the Philippines, such as Bulletin de Medicina de Manila, Revista Pharmaceutica de Filipinas, Cronicas de Ciencias Medicas. So yung focus ng mga journals na ito are the diseases found in the Philippines because we are a tropical country. Yung mga Spaniards kasi, nanggaling sila sa Spain, which is a temperate country, kapag temperate kasi ang in ang climate, iba rin yung mga sakit na nandun. So, meron tayo mga sakit dito sa tropical countries na nasa atin lang na wala doon sa mga bansa nila or sa temperate countries. Okay? So, lahat yon ay documented on these journals. And then, they also established Laboratorio Municipal de Manila, which is a laboratory for examination of food, water, and clinical samples. Their, their scientist there is General Antonio Luna, yung ating isa sa mga bayani. He was employed as a chemical expert and pioneered water testing, forensics, and environmental studies. So, during, um, let's now go to the American public health system. So, tapos na yung Spanish time. Nung nawala yung mga Spanish, na yan, the Spanish military hospital was converted into the First Reserve Hospital by Lieutenant Colonel Henry Lippincott. He is actually the chief surgeon assigned here. 
in the Pacific. And then you have there Richard Strong. He is the one who used the laboratory to perform autopsies, examine blood, feces, and urine with other laboratory tests. So during the American period, take note of the hospital. The Spanish military hospital was converted into the first reserve hospital. The person responsible for that is Lieutenant Colonel Henry Lippincott, which is the chief surgeon. And then they also have Richard Strong. He is the one who performed autopsies, examined the blood, feces, and urine. So, siya yung pinaka-medical technologist during that time. Okay? Now, in 1901, that is establishment of the Bureau of Government Laboratories under the Philippine Commission Act. It is located in Calle Heran or Pedro Hill by this time. So, napakalaki yung laboratory. It has a science library. Meron siyang chemical section for chemistry. It has a serum laboratory for production of vaccines. So, ano ba yung mga kasi during that time, since nasa tropical country tayo, marami tayo mga diseases that is found here in the tropics. So, gumagawa sila ng mga vaccines against that. Now, we have here Paul Freer. He is the Bureau's first director. And then, however, the, the Bureau of Government Laboratories was destroyed during World War II. So, nasira din siya. Ngayon, present time, yung build, yung area na yon is where the NIH is located. The National Institute of Health of University of the Philippines. Nasa Manila area siya. Again, take note. Take note of the Bureau of Government Laboratories. Again, it is located in Pedro Hill, Ermita, Manila, or Calle Heran during that time. That is a very big laboratory during that time. So, meron siyang library, chemistry section, and serum laboratory for production of vaccines. During 1905, the Bureau of Science was established. Ang purpose of Bureau of Science is to study tropical diseases. Bakit? Kasi nga, iba yung mga sakit dito sa Pilipinas. So, this Bureau of Science, they also focus on the effect of the tropical climates in the health of white foreigners. So, tinitignan nila yung pathology ng white foreigner. When you say pathology, ano ba yung nangyayaring abnormal change sa katawan ng mga white foreigner if they stay a long time here? in tropical countries such as the Philippines. So the Bureau of Science, it actually became an active center for scientific research and instructions during that time, ha? Nasa atin ang centro ng research during that time because we have here the Americans. So they focus on microbiological diseases such as cholera, malaria, leprosy, tuberculosis, and dysentery. These are actually diseases very common in tropical countries. Now, during 1933, they established now the Bureau of Health. And in June of 1927, the UP College of Public Health started its Certificate in Public Health program. So ito na yung time na nagkakaroon na tayo ng start of formal training or proper training sa mga medical technologists. So this aims to provide proper training to the Philippine Health Service medical officers. So yung mga Pilipino Na that will serve in the hospitals of the Americans, they are formally trained. Okay? And then, nakakaroon na ng certification. The one responsible for that is the UP College of Public Health. And in December 8, 1941, this is now the time that Japan attacked Manila. And then, nakaroon tayo ng World War II. So, ito na yung panahon na medyo paalis na yung mga Amerikano sa Pilipinas. So, what happened during the time is that the medical laboratory unit of the U.S. Army Ito yung mga sundalo galing sa Amerika, pumunta sila dito to provide medical services. Now, besides that, they also perform laboratory tests such as water analysis, examination of food supplies, culture media, distribution of regions or solutions, investigation of epidemics and epizootics, and post-mortem examination and preservation of pathological specimen. So, ito yung mga sundalo coming from US. You call them as the medical labor laboratory unit. Now, for the history of medical technology in the Philippines, ito na yung after the Americans na umalis na sila. 
the 6th Infantry Division of the U.S. Army. They are the one who established the first clinical laboratory in the Philippines. However, yun nga, na since nawala yung mga Amerikano, naiwan na siya sa Pilipinas. That first laboratory in the Philippines was located at Kirisa, um, Kirisada Street, Santa Cruz, Manila, now known as Manila Public Health Laboratory. So, noong 1945, nung nawala na yung U.S. Army, iniwan nila ang laboratory na yan sa Department of Health ng Pilipinas or the National Department of Health. It was then reopened in 1945 of October by Dr. Pio de Roda and Dr. Mariano Ecasiano. Now, Dr. Pio de Roda is very important sa Philippines. Why? Kasi nga naman, Dr. Pio de Roda together with Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana, they are the one who first conducted the training program of medical technologies in the Philippines. Ito yung after the Americans. Kasi diba, sabi ko kanina, nagkaroon din naman ng training program during the time of the Americans. Then, the one that facilitated that is the UP College of Public Health. So, mayroon sa ng certification sa kanilang public health program. However, that is only the public health program. Hindi talaga siya, um, hindi talaga siya focus sa mga laboratory technicians. And then, that's why Dr. Pio de Roda and Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana conducted a formal training program sa mga laboratory technicians. And then, they also drafted a syllabus or they created a formal syllabus, a six-month formal syllabus that, is cre that was created by Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana. So, that six-month formal syllabus is actually a training program with certificate. So, para siyang internship program wherein yung mga, estu yung mga estudyante, they will work in the Manila Public Health Laboratory for six months. They will be trained sa buong laboratory. And then after six months ng training program na yun, they will be given a certificate. So, magiging certified medical technologist na sila. Now, Dr. Tier Sobrion is also joined the two, or Dr. Pio de Roda and Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana, in conducting the training program. So, tatlo sila, Dr. Tier Sobrionis, Dr. Pio de Roda, and Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana. Again, si Dr. Pio de Roda, together with Dr. Mariano Icasiano, sila yung nag-reopen ng Manila Public Health Laboratory. Sinimula nila uli. Tapos, sinali nila si Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana. Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana naman, siya yung gumawa ng training program with certificate para sa mga medical technologists or lab technicians during that time. And then, Dr. Tier Sobrionis joined them to help them with the training program. And then, during 1954, the Bureau of Private Education was able to recognize the efforts of Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana and company and they approve a four-year course in BS Medical Technology. So, Manila Sanitarium and Hospital opened the first school of medical technology. So, yung nagsimula ng school na yan or formal school talaga. Kasi yung kaila Dr. Prudencia Santa Ana, sa mismong laboratorio, nagtitrain yung mga estudyante. Ito naman, meron ng four-year course sa medical technology. So, kailangan na talaga ng eskwelahan or school. The first school is the Manila Sanitarium and Hospital. So, they opened the first school of medical technology under the leadership of Mrs. Willa Hedrick. Now, they also have an internship program, but it is affiliated in Loma Linda University in California. Again, that is Loma Linda. Now, in 1954, you have the Pil Philippine Union College located in Baisa, Caloocan, now known as the Adventist University of the Philippines. They took over the MSH or the Manila Sanitarium and Hospital. So, dati kasi Manila Sanitarium and Hospital ang eskwelahan. However, nagsara siya, ang pumalit is the Philippine Union College. Yun ang nagtuloy ng ginagawa ng Manila Sanitarium and Hospital. And then, the first graduate of the Medical Technology Program is Dr. Jesse Umali. Again, don't forget, the first graduate of Medical Technology Program is Dr. Jesse Umali. So, after graduating in Medical Technology, he pursued a degree of medicine in FEU and later he became 
an uh, a gynecologist, an OB gynecologist. And then in 1957, that is now the time that UST came in. However, they offered medical technology only as an elective for pharmacy students. So when you say elective, hindi talaga siya formal na, na course. Kung gusto lang itake ng mga pharmacy students, pwede na nang itake kung ayaw nila, pwede namang hindi. Ganun. Elective lang kasi siya. However, noong 1961, ito na yung panahon that UST started medical technology as an official program. So, nagkaroon ng separate course for medical technology sa UST in 1961. So, that is the brief history of medical technology in the Philippines. Do you have any questions?